Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. I either have or will cover other parts of this franchise and this video either is or will be linked below. I'm not going to restate here what I did or will say in the other video. These videos get long enough as it is. Put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam-pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. Earthworm Jim Video Game Thoughts and Here we go Now thoughts. These are only going to be thoughts and specifically level notes. I said everything else in the review and I'm going to try not to restate but some of the things I just love talking about so much that I might end up repeating myself on but I suppose level notes, I'm not sure if completely explained what I mean by that. Basically, either as I'm playing, I'll pause and note something that just, you know, like almost free association, or it'll be after I've played a full level, and I'll go back and try to remember what it made me think. Depending on, you know, in something like this, I can very easily just alt-tab out of it and type in some notes. Alt tap back. The the game is even nice enough to pause for you when when you do that. So, yeah. Now, expect a lot of I like and I love. I do try to describe as well, making it more worthwhile. So, yesterday was genuinely Friday the thirteenth in October. This would be a great day to have planned something horror related to review. Whoops. And the rest of this section is going to be political. So if you don't want to, to hear that, just skip to the next section, the length section. Now, Trump is saying Tillerson should take an IQ test. I just don't think it's right for Trump to ask someone to take a test that he couldn't spell without looking it up. And Cenk Uyghur brought up that Einstein wouldn't brag about his smarts the way Trump does. Einstein did famously say that there are only two things that are infinite, the universe and Trump's stupidity. And for all the Trump golfs, he's, you know, which during his president he's already been an obscene amount, he's not even any good at it. Is there anything he isn't terrible at? I'd say whining, but even there, as whenever he attempts to communicate, he quickly gets meandering, nonsensical, and remarkably dumb. I, when, when I heard the... I think I probably heard it before, because it's not new that Trump cheats at golf, but, you know, when, when they talked about on the Young Turks that he'll, you know, he'll tip the caddies more if they help him cheat, and he'll write a lower number down than than he actually got on the... It's just... How sad is that? How pathetic is that? Like, if I knew someone... If, if someone, one of my friends or someone in my family or something did that, like, I, I would be ashamed to be seen with them anywhere near a golf... It, yeah...
and you know, Jane, you recently said, you know, do you get that sense when you turn on the TV? No, when you turn on the TV for news, you get nonsense. And you know, Jen kind of said, you know, sing songy, we want to get tax cuts. Today's the day the Republicans get their tax cuts. I love how that now Trump is telling the NFL to fire someone for using their freedom of speech. The conservatives who whine about that right when Nazis are running people over suddenly got real quiet. You're really throwing our budget out of whack. Do you know how many golf games you're costing me? As if it wasn't enough, I had to stop golfing to go here. I invented that word. The word fake? Please, celebrities were fake for generations before you came around. So Eminem just did a BET freestyle on Trump. Smart, informed, well-written, verbal, eloquent, lyrical, vicious with excellent points. I can't praise it enough. Every single time, every time that I find myself believing, okay, that's it, no way Eminem could possibly impress me more than he already has. There's only so far you can go every time he surpasses it. He's already near the top of my all-time favorite artists, regardless of medium. So College Humor just uploaded the hilarious standing up for yourself as a woman, but not too much. I love that we've come so far since the 80s and 90s. I'm not saying in all cases, but the following is true of so much of the most easily accessible and furthest reaching comedy today. Minorities are no longer the butt of the joke. Their existence and them deserving to be treated equally is, in so many cases, treated as natural. It's the starting point. Oxygen is breathable, grass is green, and minorities deserve equal rights. The jokes treat them as human beings. You know, you have all these the, the articles, this is what the world looks like when you're lesbian, Jewish, Catholic, on your period, gay, biracial. And it's not mocking towards them as people, it's actually from their perspective. And, you know, all of this available via College Humor on Google+. I distinctly remember the 90s, with all its homophobia, transphobia, xenophobia. If you were even a little different, you might as well be a Martian. Length. Now, I have completed this countless times since I got it, which was when it was new. And just going over the last, let's see, four times I've played it. Just, yeah, since, since early 2015, I've played it four times. And I usually get around an hour and 35 minutes is, is what it takes me to play from start to finish. New Junk City. Very cute pun on New York City. I love that the dogs are basically just all teeth and then you got the eyes and a little set of legs. It just, yeah, you know, their their teeth are just humongously, yeah. And and that's kind of what it feels like when you're being attacked by a dog. It's like, you know, it's it's a moving set of teeth. And you know, in the, in the game, it's in part that they're always moving and nearly always attacking. It really does capture the cartoon image of a scary dog, a strong dog. And I like that if you get attacked by the crow several times, it'll grab a hold of your head, try to yank you out of the suit, since you are a worm and they are crows. You know, it's, it's a fairly natural relationship between the two of you. And they explode into feathers and beak when they die. Very cartoony. You know, not just this, you know, it's, it's child-friendly because there's no blood, but it's not just that they're, like, fading out into, you know, nothing or, like... You know, yeah, that's that's a fairly typical way in in video games. For, or they'll like start blinking and then blink out, blink out of existence when as you are defeating them. And you know, you launch the cow, and it's not just the fact that you know, well, in order to proceed, you will have to launch this cow. It actually immediately informs you, cow launched. You know, as if it was like you know, a, a spaceship or just, you know, something, something important, you know, door, over, you know, door lock overwritten or something.
and I love the conveyor belt that you have to climb, which physics defyingly transports the objects downwards instead of in a horizontal direction, and they only fall once they're all the way down. And I love the, the mini boss, the shy tire trash can being, you know, just again, so many, they, they have, there's so much personality in this game. You know, so many bosses, it's like, you know, they're, they're, you know, you'll you'll wound them and there'll be a little time for them. But he actually, like, he's like, oh, it's, you know, it's just turning all shy. It's, yeah. And I love the, the slip and slide bit. Very careful timing of jumps. And I love when you're out of the suit and, you know, he'll, you know, the, the suit will keep moving, just like wave at you and like point down the, the head hole to, you know, just in here, in here, in, in case you, you know, until you hop back in. And, you know, the, the I like the boss and the, the tactic with using the crate. Andy Asteroids 1. Psycho can be so annoying grabbing the turbo boost right in front of your eyes. On the first try, these can be super difficult, but you get the hang of them when you play them multiple times. And you know, for the regular levels, I find that playing carefully, you get the hang of them quicker, other than you know when you can. But these go by so fast. You know, it occurs to me. I did write down how long each individual level took, and I didn't specifically do that so that I could mention this but I really I yeah given that I've played it so many times and you know feel free to post your times New Junk City took me 14 minutes and 57 seconds and the Asteroids 1 took me 1 minute and 22 seconds and I also forgot to mention how much excuse me let me just yeah this time it took me an hour and 49 minutes but that is counting the end credits which I usually don't count. I'm not sure why I did this time, but I just, you know I didn't turn off the timer, so I don't I don't have the count without the end credits. I guess if I looked up the the video on YouTube, but anyway. What the heck? And it took me 12 minutes and six seconds. I love the score of heck, you know, classical music and then, and it's like it's it's I think a piece you know, but I don't know classical music, but you know, and then you have Muzak with the screams of anguish and pain and just both fit perfectly. There is if I believed in heck, that is exactly what I would think is like, you know, first you've got the, the classical, you know, and then, you know, sometimes they'll play this music, and the music isn't quite loud enough to drown out the many screams of anguish. And I love that the teeth of the flying black demon things look like they wouldn't fit in their mouth. And great use of flames for danger in this level, and the level really does feel like heck. You know, flames will just erupt from you walking certain places. And I love the gates of heck where you literally have to tail whip, then hurry, but not top, not touch, not get too close, or literally close on you. And of course, heck has lawyers running around, and they're literally attacking you with the the files, you know, the their their papers, because that's you know it it wouldn't make any sense if they like, you know bash you over the head or something. Oh, well, no, bashing you over the head with the suitcase might mean, you know, the, anyway, but yeah, you know, they, they attack with their legal, yeah. And there are snowmen in Hank, because, this, you know, you always talk about, you know, snowballs chance in Hank. Apparently, some snow, you know, some snowballs are really, really good at surviving Hank, and actually manage to, you know, yeah, grow, grow big enough that they can become snowmen, and they're, like, attacking with fire also, just, yeah. And, of course, the devil is a skinny little cat. Any 
Any person who's ever encountered a cat knows the devil is definitely a cat. And, you know, you see him dancing in the background long before you actually reach him. I, I don't think, though, that they completely fall for him. There are a few times where he'll pop up at the bottom of the level and throw a bomb. And in those parts, you can still see him dancing in the background. I'm not sure if they realized that that would be... Maybe they just figured, you know, it's, it's okay. It's not... Yeah. And I like the fight against him. I like the bit where, you know, he, I guess he like steals the suit temporarily and some, and you have to time your jumps right to avoid. And, you know, the fire he shoots will eventually burn the column and you can go back into the suit. But yeah, you know, he attacks with scratchy claws. And yeah, that again, if, if, if the devil existed, there's 100% certain it's a cat and it's coming at you with its claws like yeah and you know he has nine lives and you know not not only do does he have these nine lives and you have but every single time he loses a life you have you know that that voiceover telling you how you know what life that was what number of life that was and doing so in in some kind of funny voice you know yeah and he turns into an angelic figure whenever he dies because that's you know that's what happens when you die you have you know the angel like soul leaves the body big broody eight minutes and 13 seconds for this one I love about this level that you cannot hurt Big Broody with your weapons. You're always avoiding him, using home alone traps and such. And, you know, I like that the flies fall apart, similar to the crows. Again, a good way to keep it PG, but make it satisfying. And, you know, you lure Broody out, but not... You don't go... You're not... It doesn't work if you're too far away. He's not going to be able to smell you there but not too close because he will eat you before you even get chased and then you run and he quickly catches up so you have to get to a place he can't get to you and it's always he he's always closer than you'd like him to be and you know it's quite fun to shoot the tiny brooties and you know you don't want to be too slow getting back to where big broody came from he'll make it back there before you do really yeah appreciate it that and Andy Asteroids 2. 1 minute and 24 seconds. And I love the animation when you hit Psycho. He really does look like a bird getting upset. Which in reality, of course, not funny, but sad. But here it's funny. And, you know, you basically have to get every turbo boost or he will overtake you. And... In at least one of these, if you miss at least one specific one, Psycho will get it and make it, you know, he can already overtake you, you know, if you, if you don't get them all, even when he isn't getting them. And I love the random sounds and the music, sheep, I forget what it's called, but, you know, going ba and cartoon jump and, uh, yeah. And they do a good job of putting the water or whatever drops near asteroid chunks, making it challenging every second of the way. Some of these things, when, when I say about an anti-asteroids level, is just stuff I remember from other times I've played them. Not everything I say in one of those is specific to that iteration of anti-asteroids. Down the tubes. Looks like it's going to be a short video, but I kind of figured. I love when you pull yourself up by the butt to make yourself small up there. I love the animation when the big mouse catches you. It's very Tom and Jerry cartoon violence via cat. Wait, mouse, okay. Yeah, the, the big, big cats. Yeah, yeah, sorry, don't know why I wrote mouse. 
and you know and another enemy you can't fight you can barely even slow him down and if you try you'll just have him heading towards you possibly sooner than he would otherwise but this can be used to your advantage since you need him to pass close to you before you can get past him and of course if you do get to the other side of him he will throw you in the direction you want it to go even you know if you if if he's like here and you have to get from here to over here if you pass real close but just barely get to the other side and he runs into you he's gonna throw you in the right direction so that's you know but you still you lose health and if you're playing on one of the higher difficulty settings it's really gonna yeah you really don't want that to happen and you know riding the giant hamsters a fun out there idea and I love the biting and the tiny cat that flips you back and forth and also just that idea he's so tiny he's so much smaller than Jim and yet he just whips your you know he he whips you around like like Hulk does Loki at the end of the first Avengers you know <coughs> excuse me and I love the little bubble submarine the I love that the difficulty of these increases each time, sometimes just gradually. They could easily have led with the, you know, with one of the last ones. And some some things in this game are really tough right from right away. You know, certainly parts of Budville are. But you know, each I I don't feel like any of the sub parts are subpar. They're all fun and memorable. And, you know, I love that you can refill air, but not repair. You know, as tough as it can be, you are supposed to take your time rather than shrug off ramming by accident too many times. And the cow flies past. And I guess... Yeah, I can briefly... Two brace. Took me three minutes and twenty-eight seconds, and the only thing I wrote for this one was that this final subpart is absolutely epic, and just yeah, I love it. Andy Asteroids three, and I did not note anything for this one. That I, playing it again did not make me think of anything that I didn't put in the other ones, and it took me a minute and twenty-one seconds. not a problem part one and this took me 38 seconds to complete the snake in the water must be a reference to commander keen Four's snake I'm, I'm not talking about the the yellow slug but the yeah I'll, you know both of them first appear is just a small green eye moving side to side but if you get gets if you get close, it bites you and you die. And that can happen from being pushed by an enemy that doesn't kill, or from trying to avoid contact with another enemy. And just, yeah, I, you know, you, you can't reference Commander Keen 4 without putting a smile on my face. You just can't. Which, you know, yeah, I appreciate all the, the blowfish appearances in, in many, many games big games, beautiful games. And I love the electric guitar, you know, in, in this level, and just in general, the music of this level is really awesome. It's not a problem, part two. And this one took me a minute and two seconds, and I did not make any notes for it. It's not a problem, part three. And this took me a minute and 57 seconds. And, you know, if you do get bitten, you're cut in half like worms sometimes are, and then both halves can live on. But, I, you know, I guess if he's in two halves, he's not big enough to fill the suit. I don't, I don't know exactly. But, again, you know, I mean, if, like... Let's say that a kid doesn't know, plays this game, you know, Jim gets bitten in half, and he runs crying to his mother and say, 
the worm got bit in half. And she's immediately going to say, sweetie, it's okay. Worms can go on living even if they are cut in half. And yeah, you know, the the same thing happens a few other times in the game. And yeah, it's a it's a clever way to get around. You know, I mean, I can imagine that they like had a chat with like the census run. You can't have the character cut in half in a children's game. And they just pointed out he's not dead. Everybody know, you know, even small children, you know, it's something you learn as, you know, I don't know, six or seven years old. Worms can go on living even if they are cut in half. And the asteroids, part four. I realize that if you don't have like, like on PC, the you know there's a level so my version at least has a level selector, so you know if if you don't have like a level selector, I guess this is a little harder to, you know, it, I, I can imagine the anti-asteroids level kind of just becoming a blur because you can't just look in the menu and see what number time it is and yeah. Say lovey. Right, I did already write it down. This took me a minute and 12 seconds. This is one where you really need to get every turbo, excuse me, and miss every asteroid. You know, in the first few times you play this level, it can be really difficult. And not to brag, but I usually get it perfect. This time I hit one asteroid in the last, last eighth, but just bumped into Psycho each time he almost overtook me, so I still beat him to the planet. He didn't, I, I beat him to the planet every single time in this playthrough. I just realized that I forgot to, I was going to let him win in one of them just to play again that part. But, you know, anyway, it's not, it's not hugely different from other regular levels. You know, he, he flies around and attacks you similar to, like, crows, only he has a mini boss worth of health. And you attack him until he eventually gives up. Level 5. While this is obviously not as clever a title as the second game's level 8, spelled A-T-E, I do still appreciate that just, you know, yeah, you have all these levels with like really, you know, with fitting titles, some of them really clever, and then one of them is just level 5. 14 minutes and 39 seconds. Level loads, boom. Flying green brains with a single eyeball attached, and they fall apart when shot, and I don't know exactly what the things are supposed to be that they fall apart into, I guess. I mean, they look like, kind of look like shrimp, but then, and, and they like, come at you still, bro. And you know, staying on the sphere for a second, you may get electrified and detached brains hop around and flying eyeballs. And the escalator is turned on and you know, suspended in a cage, aim your gun to stop the incoming enemies. I I quite like. Are those amoeba with brains? And your worm body gets caught on fans, and you have to avoid the spinny, spiky things and enemies. And there's that one valve you can whip to get power-ups. And the chicken boss shoots eggs at me. He must pummel me with his unborn children. And I drop amoeba on him. And again, in the, the main review I already talked about, you know, I forget his name. But yeah, the, the professor and Marianne and the, the, the part where you're falling, you and the chicken boss are both falling. And the asteroids part five. This is, yeah, it took me a minute and 44 seconds. This is one where you really get screwed if you don't make it first to the turbo boosts, except for maybe the very first or second one. But yeah, this is especially true near the start, near the end of the level. You have got to, or he will continue to, to take every single one.
for Pete's sake. Again, a nice, clever, like, double meaning kind of, you know, it's, that's, you know, it's, it's an exclamation in, you know, frustration, and the level certainly can offer frustration, but, yeah, you're also doing it for the sake of Pete. And 7 minutes and 42 seconds is my time. I said a lot of what I had to say about it, this in the review. I love the giant octopus that slaps you back if you yourself touch it. And the, the UFO that, you know, I guess it's like a tractor beam. And, you know, if you, you step on the wooden platform to lower it, and step off to send Pete up, and you've got the seesaw. And I... Considering that he doesn't take any damage, and it often helps him out. I love whipping Pete, you know, when necessary, and then shooting at a thing before he lands, and the cow flies by in the distance. And, you know, if you, when, when you get to the, the bit with, like, you can go advanced, or you can go home, you know, Pete's home, if you try advanced, and you fail, he might just pick you up, fly you all the way back, spit you out before the, yeah, making, picking home look real appealing. But at the same time, you know, if, if you fail in advance if you, and you keep failing, you can really run through a lot of lives there because it gets difficult. And he looks so happy waving you goodbye after you get him home. <clears throat> Excuse me. I swear I tried to do this before. And Andy Asteroid 6. And this took me a minute and 20 seconds. And there are some really tight groupings of asteroids in this. And in this, I do intentionally hit a few asteroids that have turbo boost right behind them. And I'm really glad that you're safe for a few seconds after hitting one. And that you are while turbo boosting. Intestinal distress. Four minutes and thirty-two seconds, and you've got fish flying with propellers, and and it's like you know, oh, he he eats entire fish. It's it's not just that. No, they've got propellers. You know, every, every single time in in the game that you're like, you think, oh, okay, this makes perfect sense. You know. The, the game's always going to do some kind of out there or cartoony thing to really, uh, yeah. And you've got the giant balls. I guess there are balls of like slime or, you know, some kind of mu yeah, mucus something. And the balls literally vomits up stomach acid or something. And, you know, a decent balls tactic, you know, gotta, gotta jump away from him, forcing him to jump. Put a little distance between the two of you. And then when he can't immediately hit you from where he is, you shoot him. Quick before he jumps away, you know, quickly before he jumps away again, which he will once you start shooting him as well, and then you jump again, rinse and repeat. Andy Asteroids 7. And. Yeah, this took me a minute and 19 seconds. Psycho got the first boost, I got the second, and we both missed the third. Let's see. Buttville. This took me 19 minutes and 53 seconds, credits included. It did not take me that long to beat the, the level, and I did not die. I, I, didn't, I didn't lose a single continue. I died several times, but I kept picking up extra lives enough that I could, yeah. And the first part is so spiky, so much floating, so hard to avoid, especially until you've gotten the hang of it and know how the level goes. It's real, like, you know, and, and then after that, it's still really difficult. The first time you play this level, you might lose, like, several lives, lose, lose one continue just on the spiky part. And if you just barely make it to a continue, but then lose your last life on one of the next parts, yep, have to do the spiky part again. And we've got the bugs flying out of the wasps' nests. And, you know, 
you just see two eyes kind of hitting, oh, okay, and then boom, out comes the worm, bites you in half, also a lot like the earlier mentioned snake in Commander Keen 4, and he hides from your gunfire, and you have to whip him, whip him good, and even that, it's like he's trying to hide from that, and yeah, and there's, there are like two or three that are like really annoyingly difficult to get away from, you know, one is after you've jumped up several of these, you know, the, the, did I really not write those? Hmm. Well, yeah, anyway, the, the, you know, yeah, those, those, like, pumpkin things that you, you slide off if you just stand on them, and the, yeah, after you jump up, and then there's one part where there's, like, two or three in a row, and, like, one or two of those, some of the last ones, are really difficult to, to hit. And honestly, I've found that sometimes, if you just time it right, it's easier to just jump past them. You know, you don't want to jump while he's out. Because even though he, you know, I figured, well, he's just about done biting. No, he will still bite him in half. But it's like, yeah, it, it has to be like the eyes and just really hurry. Past. Like, right after he's done biting, he'll pull back in. And, yeah, it's hard to, you know, the moving through this level is really hard. It really pushes you to the edge. And, you know, honestly, some of the times I've had trouble with this game is when I forget that pushing up when you jump can make you go higher. You know, and, and at the same time, sometimes you don't want to go high. Like in this, when you're jumping on the slippery pumpkin like things, you, you, you don't necessarily want to whip up high or jump high and then whip because he's almost on the same level as you. And that's the thing. You can't stand there and whip because you won't hit him. He's just not far enough. But the moment you jump, you're a little higher than him. So you have to jump, move closer, whip, and do, do it at the exact right time where it will hit him. And then immediately turn back around and grab onto one of these pumpkins. And again, that's especially hard in the, you know, that first part where you jump up, it's like, ugh, now I have to jump up the, those again. In the other part, if you fall down, I forget. I did, it didn't happen this time. But if I, if I recall, if you don't catch that pumpkin, you just fall down and die. That's, yeah. Now, and you've got the, you know, the tiny green frog thing, just forked tongue. That again, this tiny little thing. It's like, no, oh, that's almost kind of cute. Whoa, that's now that's an attack. You know, it's. I mean, it's not. It doesn't do a, a ton of damage, but it's like you don't want to get close to that thing. And the cow is still flying. And you know, you're sliding off the pumpkins. Oh, that's this is where I put it. But yeah, you know, with the, the slime of pumpkins and the snakes that bite you in half, thank goodness for mid-level saves. And you know, you want to whip the butt claw, don't shoot it, you'll run out of ammo. And you got to shoot her upper body for a long time. You know, if you don't pick up a lot of ammo, you will run out here. And she's like bloating and then exploding when you defeat her. Such a relief. And, you know, when the... There, I realized that technically, especially on the really high high difficulty settings, you don't want to constantly be shooting at her. You only want to shoot as you're right next to, above, or under. Why did I... above or under? Yeah, that's the other way around. I, I watched Thor yesterday, so I think my mind is still trying to wrap its head around... Wait, uh, is Asgard upside down from our perspective? Does does Thor like feel slightly nauseous from walking upside down when he's on Earth? Anyway, yeah, the the I love that movie. I, honestly, in some ways, I love it more than the second one. And I've already talked about this in other videos, I think. And this video is not at all, it's not even remotely related. So I'm gonna stop. 
the the you know I've I've realized that that's what you're supposed to do. But if you only do that for one thing, the moment you let go of the trigger and then you have to like press like up or to the side, it can be difficult to not accidentally walk off the, the little slime platform that spins you around her. So yeah. But but you know, if you run complete metal ammo, then it you know thankfully you can't literally have no ammo. It's just gonna very slowly regenerate when it's under a hundred. Again, thankfully it didn't happen this time, but yeah. If and if you don't if if too long passes without you shooting her, you know, she's always like getting the, the wand out because you can't you can't literally hit her every single second. And if she has the wand out for like a second or more, then out come the bugs. And she can keep doing that for a lot of times, and each time you might lose a little health. It's difficult to shoot all of them, and if as you're shooting all of them, she's getting ready to do, give you more bugs. So, yeah. At the end, when you reach the queen, you realize that almost the entire level is literally her slug butt. You've been running on her butt for upwards of 15 minutes. That's, yeah. And I did not make any notes for it, but this level, this video is short. So I guess I could briefly talk about the endings because in the review, I of course don't give any, any deep, uh, I don't give any, I, I don't give away any details. So I love, the, I, I forget if medium and hard are different. I think both of those are the same. But I love that on easy you get the, the you know, you complete it and it's, you know, and it says, what a worm. And, you know, if you want to see the real ending, you have to complete it on a higher difficulty setting. You know, I in, in the Hercules review, I talked about how much I hate when a game says, nope, you're not on a high enough difficulty to play the last few levels. I love when a game says, you completed the game but it wasn't on a high enough difficulty setting to get the right ending because at the end of the day you can be like maybe I could complete it on a higher ending or a higher difficulty level or you know what I, I can live with not getting the real ending but yeah just and the, the, the I if you watched this video up to this point and you haven't played it on easy you haven't completed it on a low on, on the easy difficulty setting try that at least once or you know since you don't really since you aren't really earning it if you've already completed on a higher difficulty then you can just look it up on YouTube but it's just it's hilarious this whole thing like and it's like it it's not just that you know okay you're not going to complete it on a high difficulty setting guess what you're not getting the real ending and you're getting a lecture on worms and throughout the lecture they have like cute little oh, must get must smell real bad inside the suit or a machine gun you know but then the guy they paid to read it out loud reads you know he like editorializes you know he's like oh, evolution now we're all believing in evolution huh and and you know most worms are known as Dave Perry you know <laughs> and then he doesn't read it fast enough to keep up and like over the course of it he like he gets increasingly he he starts to care less and less because at at first he's like oh crap i can't read um okay sure I, I, let's just i'm gonna just pretend that i read all of that and i'm gonna continue reading from this line and you know sometimes he'll Somebody get real slow, he'll struggle with pronunciation, you know. And the the you know, like like Gal Gadot in some of her idealistic speeches in Wonder Woman. Once again, I love that movie, but yeah. The the one of the few things about it that are a little unfortunate. But the the I will say there's there's like a college humor put up like a bunch of funny moments from her and sometimes her not you know her her ESL status it makes for some really funny like the the she she was like being interviewed along with the rest of the cast of BVS and like one of them is like oh yeah you you know Gal Gadot and Amy you got along real well right and she's like oh we slept together I mean 
slumber party. We had a slumber party. You know, just yeah. She's she's awesome, both in the role and out of. Anyway, yeah, the you know he's strong in pronunciation, getting and and he gets increasingly like there's so much there are so many different levels to his performing of it. You know, it's I mean, again, it's like it's, here's a few minutes of a lecture on words. You know, just comp a lot of it's just pure scientific. Yeah. And then they have him like trying to read it, but then he can't quite. Some stuff he can't pronounce. Sometimes he doesn't read it fast enough. And over the course of it, you know, at first he'll like give them, and and then he'll be like, you know, he'll he'll start like, you know, he goes, bah, 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 bah. they want to read this, bah, 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 bah. but it's going too fast, and all this stuff. Just yeah, that's that's really funny. And the the real ending as you unlock it, and I meant to rewatch it, but I do remember it. It's it's been a few years since I earned it. I will admit that I I my my yeah I I used to be much better at and and much more you know pig-headedly stubborn like a donkey about doing you know the, when when I play especially stuff like platform you know ar arcade games and such to to you know do it uh, do it is just absolutely perfectly and do it on a high difficulty setting and all that stuff but I did earn it a few years ago but yeah you know you have Jim running up to the you know and she's standing there on on the ledge and like you know he and he's doing the the he he full on does the I, I forget what it's called but like you know you see in the mask as well the the red hot riding hood or whatever it's called where he's like you know literally wolf whistling and and the whole the, yeah and yeah you know he's about to go join her and then the cow lands and it like lands directly on top or wait. Yeah, I think it lands on top of her, and then the the ledge also like falls off down into, I, or maybe that happens a few minutes later. But but yeah, you know, and like the, the you know, and, and you have the credits rolling, and then and and Jim leaves, and then Jim comes back and like picks up her crown from the, you know, what was that lava beneath or you know something like that. Just yeah really really funny ending and just and it fits perfectly with the tone of the rest you know who would really have thought that that like the you know that this would be a game that would be like just you know that perfect you know happy ending and so now that I think about or am I thinking of the second one but there's one either this or the second one has the the ending where it says like you're, yeah it says like you're the best and it comes it it goes into this like you know the the yeah he's like and and I'm almost certain it's the same voice as well and he's like there's amazing you did it on the highest difficulty you know what you're probably the first person to beat it at this difficulty you're amazing you're you're one of a kind and then he gets into this really dark and he's like you know and and when you know when you find yourself completely alone because your friends hate you you can just say you know what the guys at shiny they think I'm the best and when you're in prison because you committed this heinous crime and no one wants anything to do with you and you're you know that you're gonna spend the rest of your life in prison you can just say to yourself I'm the best. You're just awesome. I absolutely love it. And and again, if you did not earn it, you know, earn it before you see. You know, I realized I just I just gave it away, but I did tell you that that was what I was going to talk about before. So 
shame on you if you watched this far without earning that first because that just again that's it it's it's pitch perfect with the rest of the the humor i mean it's it's one of the most dark you know some some of the most dark humor in the overall game but it's by far it's it's not at all the first time that the game has really dark humor you know and so so yeah again if if you love the the game and and really if you're if you're deciding actively deciding to play through the entire game you know again pig-headedly donkey like stubbornness or you really get into the game and yeah i mean imagine how boring it would be if the ending legitimately just was jim walks away with the princess and that's it you know and i i do also really love that they literally they call they they named her princess what's her name because it really you know which in in so many of these games it doesn't even matter just you know you're the good guy so you're freeing a princess and there's an evil villain kind of type and just yeah and and the the queen she's literally named slug for a butt you know it's it's so deliciously descriptive and just yeah the, the in in general i almost kind of wish there there are a few characters in this that aren't named in the in the game and they have been given names they i i didn't watch any of the the tv series i i don't really have a problem with doing so it just you know it wasn't on tv and i don't yeah but i i realized that they reappear in that and the their names are stated there and, and i think some of the names are maybe like in the manual or something but it just you know i i do I do kind of wish that you you got a name for the the, the fish that Bob the goldfish is maybe his name I, f I forget the but but yeah and and I also do love that literally you know you reach the boss but it's a goldfish yeah you knock over his his, his you know I forget what it's called but the the round the bubble like thing that he's in you know that's that's it that's he's not gonna make it from that and that again that's an example of dark humor because that's he's bob the goldfish is now dying the exact same way that a real life goldfish dies you know if, it, if it's out of water so yeah i forget is psycho maybe named if you if you don't beat him to the planet in one of andy asteroids like then it says beat psycho or something but yeah I, I forget but yeah the the i i really love it when they are named because they legitimately you know they have such yeah really really great names and the you know the the whole you know influence of i, I already mentioned the red hot riding i forget tex avery the tex avery inspiration is very clear and greatly appreciated that's that's a thing tex avery that that style is so perfect for video games because it is you know in, in video games you can really you can go big and i'm not saying it was bad for the, the cartoons you know but it was, it was also great there, but I'm really glad that it wasn't like forgotten. You know, you see a lot less. The the prominence of the... What? what Tex Avery, was that the... Was that the little Looney Tunes? I, I forget. I'm not a big cartoon person, but the... the or character for that matter. But I, I do really, you know, it, it used to be that, you know, you got, a, you know, like two or something before a major, before you watched a major movie and then you know expectations change for cinema and yeah you know I, th I think it was actually what wasn't it when Disney started making feature length animation you know because then it was like well why would we watch two minutes of animation if we can get a whole movie of animation and I mean, there are some really great animated Disney movies, but I do feel really bad because some for for Looney Looney Tunes, because they had some amazing ones back in the day.
and I quite like back in action. I, you know, Space Jam is absolute garbage. Although it might be the kind of garbage that you can have fun with. I'm, I'm not personally, really. I don't get a lot of enjoyment out of it. But the, the, I, I do think, you know, if, if you're just sitting and picking apart how silly and crazy it all is, you know, you can enjoy that. But back in action, the, the, the thing with it is, it's like, it's super light. Like, you can watch it, and like 10 minutes can pass, and you're like, wait, did I, did I watch an entire movie? Because it just barely hits, it, it's, it's so fast and so light, but, but there are so many great things in it, you know. It's, I, I don't like Bill Goldberg in Universal Soldier The Return. I love him in Back in Action. And it's also, I'm not usually, a f they literally, they took two of my least favorite comedic actors, put them together in one movie, and made me like them. That's really impressive. You know, the, 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 I forget his name. But, yeah, the, the, his name is something, Fraser or Fraser or something. People always call him Fraser. There's no I in there. Why would... Anyway. And, and then you have the, the one. She's also in that movie with... Not William Hurt, but, but Dreyfus something. I guess they look a little bit alike. I guess that's why I mix them up. And... He's like, there's some kind of tribe. Is it maybe just called Trip Krippendorf's tribe or something? And I mean, I hated her guts in that movie. But in general, that's, that's a pretty terrible movie. But yeah, just the... the in, in that movie, I really, really like them. And... Yeah, it just... I, I, I'm really glad that back in action exists. But yeah, by and large, it's difficult to make anything long that's that's part of what I'm getting at a video game can be much longer you know this this is the length of a short movie you know even if you're really quick sorry about that even if you're really quick in completing this game nothing broke I know it might have sounded like it maybe you know if even if you're really really quick I don't know, there are probably people that are better at it than I am and and do it faster but yeah, you know, it can last you 90, 100 minutes. 90, 100 minutes. And, you know, the first few times until you get really good at it, it might take you much longer. And that's, yeah, that's where you can have that kind of animation. And, you know, I, I don't know. I've only played the first two of, of the games in this series. So, you know, I try to stay away from 3D platformers. It just... So few of them are any good, but yeah, it's especially the early ones. The really early ones are often terrible, like Bo Burnham puns, and the the. If you don't know the joke I'm referring to, you might think I'm not a fan of Bo Burnham. That's I love Bo Burnham, but the the. The, the, yeah, the, the, you know, the way to keep something like the Tex Avery style alive is to put it in games like this. And, yeah, I'm, I'm not even sure. Are there more than three Earthworm Jim games? I, yeah. I don't know why I'm asking that out loud. It's not as if you can answer me. But, yeah. I, I do think that that would, you know, that's that's great, and uh, you know, a game like Psychonauts also really, and and that's getting a sequel, so that's great. The that's also a game that has that takes these really crazy kind of, you know, stuff that could only work in animation. Like if you saw some of this stuff in live action, it would be horrifying. You know, taking you know, character design and, like, events and such, and putting them in a game that takes much longer to, you know, if you were to sit and watch, you know, Looney Tunes cartoons for the length of one of these games, you know, I mean, yeah, that would also be great, but it, you know, 
you're, you're not likely to get that much new content very often in that kind of, yeah. And I suppose, now that I've just broken an hour, the, yeah, gotten into that long of a, it, yeah, I'm basically out of things to say that are, like, really, I, I briefly just also, in addition, you know, Tex Avery visuals, you also have, like, Weird Al Yankovic E, uh, you know, audio with, you know, again, this kind of, yeah, I, I don't know if Weird Al Yankovic is even aware of this game, but, yeah, you know, like the, the, in, in New Junk City, when it's dropping all the junk via the, the conveyor belt, you know, I mean, that might as well be, like, a visual representation of, like, so, I mean, I mean, isn't that, isn't it basically a, they, they took like a few lines from a hardware store and just put them in, you know, visual form and put them in the game or just, yeah, just, and, and definitely the, the reading there at the end of the, yeah, that's, that's very Weird Al. And, you know, again, he has actually, you know, he, if, if, if it was Weird Al doing it, it, it might be set to polka. That's, that's, you know, it wouldn't necessarily be different, different words used, especially, you know, it's, I, he, he has done, you know, all, all the polka stuff, of, of, I'm not sure all of it, but a lot of that is just taking, you know, lines from popular songs and, you know, singing them to the, the polka, yeah, so doing that, yeah, I suppose... That is absolutely everything, though. Yeah. This is what happens when I've already done a review, but I really want to make more videos about a game that, you know, I I watched it again, and I was like, I talked about pretty much, of, you know, I don't have a lot left to say review-wise. It's only level-specific stuff. And starting to sound as though there's like a bomb on a bus and if I stop talking it's gonna blow up like the that that movie the bus that wouldn't slow down yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna stop it at this point and I hope this was as much fun as it was for you I, I feel like I'm I'm you know, leaving work early or something, but yeah, just, you know, it's not as though all my videos come out long, or then necessarily the longer videos, I mean, you know, they have more content, but don't necessarily get the views because people have other things to do, but nevertheless, I hope this was enjoyable for you as well. I've reviewed other parts of this franchise, the links are in the description box. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.